Flat Earth Clues Part 6 Depth Perception This is part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the flat earth system we live in and who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you. This clue looks into the inevitable design question below the surface, or more specifically, how thick the flat earth design would need to be. To start, let's quickly recap the design features so far. A basic dome structure made up of advanced high-density material thousands of miles wide and at least a hundred miles in height. The ceiling of said structure being projected upon by an ultra-high definition system using super LED technology and a combination of 2D and 3D imaging to simulate all celestial bodies including sun, moon, stars, and so on. This ceiling is then protected by a scaling decrease in temperature and oxygen levels to the point where human life isn't naturally sustainable above four miles. The lower surface of the dome structure consists of an organic layout of continents grouped at the center ensuring that no land bridge exists to the outer ring. This is then surrounded by hundreds of miles of salt water in order to limit sea travel. The salt oceans are then adjusted with a scaling decrease in temperature as the outer area is approached to the point where salt water freezes, forming icebergs, further reducing sea travel. The outer ring is then elevated to a height of 10,000 feet, reducing oxygen levels, and a buffer zone of 300 miles is created. This zone is devoid of all life forms that could be used as food, further discouraging land travel. That all sounds pretty good. But we left out one thing, depth. Keeping human beings away from the ceiling is easy, because it requires higher technology. Protecting the outer ring is a little more difficult, but can be accomplished with layers of negative reinforcement. Protecting the actual common ground is a different challenge, because digging is basic. Everyone knows how to use a shovel, and most construction requires a generous amount of digging. In addition, Natural resources such as coal, oil, minerals, are harvested through large-scale digging operations. So it's safe to say that any human population is going to be digging a lot of holes, because it's easy and it's necessary to continue their way of life. That being said, how thick would you need to make the Flat Earth model so that people didn't accidentally dig their way through? You could use the same method as the outside barrier and create a series of undesirable layers ending in a solid barrier, but the ever-expanding increases in general population would create an unnecessary risk. If the bottom of the flat earth was composed of, say, an unbreakable material, this would pique the digger's curiosity, and if repeated all over the world, would raise suspicions of design. While a solid barrier works at the end of a frozen wasteland where no one is venturing, or allowed, it doesn't do much if it's found in a mining quarry, or someone's backyard. For that, you need something that hasn't been used up to this point. A scaling increase in temperature, all the way to an ignition flashpoint, and then beyond. Now you will jump in and say, well of course, we all know that there is molten rock below the surface, we see it in volcanoes and, well, volcanoes. Yes, yes you do. And we've all seen the cross-section diagram of the globe Earth, which shows ever brighter bands of molten structure and so on, which is why I included the wiki link in the description that covers the official view of the Earth structure. And I quote, Scientific understanding of the internal structure of the Earth is based on observations of rock in outcrop, samples brought to the surface from greater depths by volcanoes, analysis of seismic waves, measurements of gravitational and magnetic fields, and experiments with crystals at pressure and temperatures characteristic of the Earth's deep interior. In short, they have no clue on what's below them. None. In fact, the deepest holes ever drilled which I've also linked in the description, only go down 8 miles. To repeat, no one has gone below 8 miles anywhere. And every drilling survey is the same, a scaling increase in temperature to the point where drill bits stop working. And you come back and say, but volcanoes! Yes, there are volcanoes, holes in the earth where molten rock is produced, under pressure, I might add. 
Certainly that can't be artificially created. No? We can melt rock right now. It's called a smelting plant. What do you think your car is made out of? Melted, reformed, and polished rock. We have the technology to do this. It all comes down to scale. Create a large set of furnaces at, say, 50 miles below the surface that can melt and pump molten rock. And you say, what would the furnaces be made out of? Oh, I don't know. How about the same dome material that can withstand nuclear weapons? So you take the molten rock, locate a few random access points on the surface, and the rest comes naturally. Volcanoes also reinforce the earth structure model that the molten rock goes all the way to the core, which then in turn reinforces the globe model, and then we're back to where we are now. A smoldering globe flying through space at high speeds that from a design standpoint makes no sense. So how thick would the flat earth model floor need to be? Oh, for common use, say less than 100 miles, similar to the ceiling in scale. Large heat generators placed in a pattern, a thin layer of molten rock 10 to 20 miles down, which is really just a geologic pipe system to help with the generation of terrain. And there you have it, an efficient way of discouraging all those digging humans from reaching too far, combining a physical barrier with a mental one. Eight miles down and you're going to tell me what the entire core looks like? Give me a break. So do some of your own research and ask questions. Please feel free to email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net or 303-494-6631.